A very good afternoon and welcome back to the Dugout Football Channel where it is time for a f- match preview. The international break is finally over. We don't have any more international breaks until March. So the Premier League is back and what a game for the Reds to return to this weekend. It is Liverpool against Leicester City. Or actually, may I rephrase that? Injury hits Liverpool versus injury hits Leicester City. To preview the game, I have two absolute legends from the Beyond the 90 podcast. We have Neil and Anthony from Beyond the 90. How are you doing, gentlemen? I'm good, mate. I'm good. How are you doing, Ant? Because we're not together at this one. Nice. It's it's a bit weird, isn't it? We're both on our lunch breaks for work. (laughs) 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 No, I'm good. I'm I'm glad that we don't have the international football anymore because it is boring, isn't it? Like genuinely the most when the most exciting thing is like a touch from I think it was Phil Foden. You know that says a lot about the international break for England. Is that just because we're England fans? I mean for, obviously with um Scotland qualifying and stuff like that, you probably I don't know if you have the same perspective about that as a Scotland fan for um in terms of like international break. But in England people just like don't bother, just send them back and just keep playing football. <laughs> um, well, to be to be honest, I, th- I think it's been a very good week for Scotland, um, and it's it's. I mean, we 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 see we see it as like I never thought in my lifetime we would qualify for an international tournament, and look how how wrong I am. So you know, um, first time in twenty three years, I, I will take it. I will take it for sure. But th- we're not talking about Scotland, and we're not talking about England. <laughs> we're talking about. League leaders Leicester City travelling to Anfield at the weekend. Um, it has to be said that you have started your season very, very well. And we have to be wary of the fact that you have already been to the Etihad and beaten Manchester City by five goals to two. Um, I'll, I'll, start with, I'll start with Neil. How are you feeling going into this game? Um, with your weakened back line, which we'll probably get onto in a bit, I'm feeling very good. I'm feeling that we've got a lot to to gain from this match and we've got confidence. However, one of the things that I am concerned about is is the amount of minutes that, well, some things in a good perspective, is the amount of minutes that you've played, both your first team mm-hmm. and then all of you, pretty much all of your team goes on international break. With us, the likes of Madison and Barnes were left out of the squad. Jamie Vardy has had two weeks just to be training um, and Mendy has not been in. So a lot of these starters haven't played a lot of minutes, which is very good for us because we're going to come um, really hard at you, hopefully. Um, mm. But yeah, I'm feeling really excited about the prospect and just to watch a game of football. And Leicester Liverpool, I think, is always a, is a good good game. Yeah, as, uh, they they always are, and we, we can obviously speak about last season. Anthony, you you were there. Um, I think Leicester City will feel a bit of injustice from the fact that you should have probably taken a point from that game. Uh, we should have, but at the same time, we were fortunate to have made it 1-1 because the amount of chances Salah, Firmino, and even Mane to an extent missed that day, like you could have well been out of sight. But the fact that we made it 1-1 and then basically handed you all three points at the end was was stupid. That ball from Schmeichel should have been going out the, out the ground and like should have been killing as much time as physically possible by putting that up into Rose Ed. Yeah, a bit of, I mean, you've started the season really, really well. And as I've said, you know, the 5-2 against Manchester City was just incredible. I mean, that that was one of the best counter-attacking performances I think I've ever seen from a, from a Leicester City side of things. Um, I, I mean, go, going into the, like, your summer signings, obviously you've got Wesley Fafana, you've got Timothy Castagna. Um, how, have you, how have you both felt of their impact so far? We're sitting here with big smiles on our faces, to be honest. And do you want to go ahead? Because we've, we've talked about that a lot. Yeah, I think Fafana's the one that's really surprising because he was a bit of an unknown unknown quantity when we brought him. And he's just been absolutely unreal. He's probably got thrown in at the deep end a bit quicker than we're expecting with our injuries to Siunchu, Johnny Evans, mm. and then having to switch to a back three. But he's done absolutely brilliantly. And I really do hope he plays against you lot because he's been one of the key, key he's been one of the key components to our back three. 
Yeah, he's coming mm-hmm. back from injury as well. Um, he only had a minor injury. I think he will be fit, fit to play at the weekend. However, there was a niggle, so I don't think he went with the French under-23s. Um, and obviously, we've had a lot of injuries that are actually coming back as well. So, Ricardo Castagna, that we mentioned, one of the signings, who's, again, looked fantastic. Under as well, who's like a, a, a Turkish winger who's looking fantastic as well. I think he'll be one to definitely look out for, for Liverpool fans as well. So there's yeah. definitely a few players in our squad that are coming through and will hopefully hit you guys um, in the wrong space. But I think both hmm. teams, where where the game is going to be won is going to be in the midfield uh, because both defences yeah. are weaker and lack in pace or experience. But going forward, both teams can be brilliant. So I think from a neutral's perspective... It's going to be a great game. Yeah, as as no, one of my games that, of the week. What's that? <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't say that! Don't say that. Um, what has really annoyed me though is the fact that Sky have literally focused on Liverpool's injuries more than they have Leicester injuries. I, I like. Honestly, it's astounded me the bias that the you know Sky have got towards like the, the you know the traditional big six. But I mean, if we've got injuries, you guys have had a lot of injuries as well, haven't you? I think so. We have, but I don't yeah, think but there's anything nothing surprises different. me with Sky anymore. Yeah, this is not surprising mm. to me and Ant to be honest that this has happened. This is kind of run, par for the course with us. Um, and you look at, for example, <laughs> with England or something like that, they'll always prioritise the big six teams and that's just always going to be the case for for Leicester and England and anybody pretty much outside the top six will be looked ahead and I get it from their perspective because you've got to remember that the majority of people worldwide that support football, support or watch the Premier League, support you guys Man United and then kind of, then Arsenal and Chelsea and people like that so they will always take centre stage in the same way that Tottenham win three games 1-0 and they're like title challenges mm-hmm. and then we beat Man City 5-2 and it's like, yeah, they're doing well. It's just something that we're used to. Doing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, it really um, annoys me. It... So what I was saying is, going back to what Neil was saying about when we beat Man City at the Etihad from Sky, it wasn't absolutely brilliant performance from Leicester. It's what went wrong for Man City. Yeah. Pep had yes. a big cry as well, and Rodri had a big cry, and it was really funny from our perspective. Going, oh, nah, that, that was good fun. But yeah. it, it's it's always going to be the case when a great manager. I was actually surprised that Pep came out in that way instead of going, no, no, they were a better team. Hold my head up, we weren't good enough. I got the tactics wrong because I think Ang could admit when they took Fernandinho off, the game changed big time. The game made yes. it made such a big difference that instead of going. They weren't. We weren't good enough. They said they're lucky, and that kind of that was very, very telling to us. Yeah, like, but I mean, sorry, Ant, go on. It's like as well, you know. Last year, I know we didn't get the Champions League football, but we finished fifth. It was what went wrong for Tottenham and Arsenal not to finish in the in the top six, not what what went right for Leicester to finish where they were. So I think this is why. A, a lot of the non-top six fans, so the other 14 club fans, don't really care what Sky say anymore. And we'll look for yeah. their sort of sources of news elsewhere. Because it was the other day I was looking at this, and out of 30 tweets on the Sky Premier League uh, Twitter page, 28 of them were referring to the big six clubs. Two were referring to um, the other 14 clubs. The only two were linking Zaha to Arsenal, and then I think the other one was something about Jordan Pickford making a mistake. Well, what else is it going to be with Jordan Pickford? Let's be honest. But, <laughs> um, <laughs> but no, yeah. the, the uh, sort of the fact to Sky that the other fourteen clubs practically don't exist is why there's mm. so many fans just turning to alternative sources. Yeah, absolutely. But I, I, as I say, you go into this game top of the top of the table and you you must be <laughs> you must be pleased with the way do you think and I'll ask I'll, I'll ask this to you both re- realistically do you think you are title contenders this season no not yet we've there's a long season ahead of us and let's face it we've once if you were to say this time of the season um one team has got six wins and two losses you wouldn't predict them to be top of the table 
Like in a normal yeah. season, you'd go what there, fifth, sixth, fourth, second, maybe. You wouldn't say they were top. It just shows you how backwards this is. And it's not to say that Leicester are doing anything wrong because we're doing things right. However, a lot of teams aren't keeping up with us. There's been a lot of freak results as well. So the fact that we've lost two and we're still first, it, it just shows you that that um, it's, it's definitely a strange season. However, we still haven't got the strength and depth. We have got good strength and depth, but we don't have the strength and depth that a top six clubs or even a club like Everton have. And that's going to make a difference when we're playing Europa League, Premier League. Don't know how far we're going in the FA Cup as well. So... I think that will really show with the the quality of the squad. And again, that's, it's not to try and downplay where we are because I think me and Bo, me and Ant and everybody as Leicester fans are really happy that we're top of the league. But we're quite pragmatic in that sense. Yeah, yeah. And and do you think your tail can turn those? Ask me this question again in March. But uh, as of now, <laughs> I'll be happy of saying that if we break the top six for a third time, I'll be happy. Consistency yeah. is what we need. Yeah, consistency is, is 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 the key when you know when you're going for you know like ch- championships and you know top four and as you say you know top six. But yeah, look, I've been very very impressed with Leicester. Um, it, it is hard for me to say because I have like obviously being a Liverpool fan, I do have a soft spot for Leicester City just 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 because of you guys because you 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 your fans are probably some of the nicest fans you could ever meet on the on like social media. All around, all around, you know, like the the YouTube world, it is it's absolutely fantastic. But yeah, let's get into the game. Um, what what have you guys made of Liverpool so far this season? And I think you've it? been, yeah, I'll go for this one. I think some games you've looked very impressive, and then some games you almost look at this and it's like, I'm going to use. I know the Villa game was a freak result, but it looked like it was eleven strangers who'd never played with each other before. So. I don't think you're the same side that you were last season, but I still think you're a, a top side. Yeah, I would, I would, I would totally agree. I think, as you say, like there have been some weird results this season. With obviously, you know, us losing seven two to Aston Villa, you know, Man, Man United losing six one at home to Tottenham, which was mad. And then I think you guys lost like three 0 against West Ham uh, as well. It's been, it's been a very, very strange season so far. Neil, what have you made of Liverpool so far? I think Liverpool have been good, but just the expectations of you winning the Champions League, winning the Premier League, the celebrations from that you're always going to have a bit of a downfall. And that's not to kind of um, belittle what you've done. I think what it is, is that that season afterwards, it kind of slumps off a little bit. And that's nothing against you guys. And obviously with the injury crisis that hits you, you're still in a good position. I mean, it could be a lot, it could be a lot worse for you guys. But I think, yeah, Liverpool have looked decent this season, but it was always going to be hard to recreate the way that you played and the t- the number of points you got last season because to keep that yeah. run up ran you into the ground completely. So you took the foot, foot off a little bit. You've got a few injuries. That's okay. But you're doing decently, I think. Yeah. It's, look, I mean, I think, I think the signing of Jota has been a big, big plus for us because, you know, ever since he's come in, I think it's seven goals in 10 games um, and he's doing well for club and country. I think he's been absolutely fantastic. And, I think now we actually have a player that could actually, you know, put Firmino potentially out of the, you know, the starting eleven. I think, but um, obviously by by knowing that Mohamed Salah is out of this game as well, so we'll probably see, you know, Jota, Firmino, and uh, Mane in this game. So it is going to be very, very intriguing. And as you say, um, our defence has been well obliterated by injuries. I mean you could you could probably go through our whole back four and say like Alexander Arnold is out, Gomez is out, Van Dyke obviously out for the end of the season as well. Uh, <laughs> Robertson, um Reese Williams as well. Neko Williams got a, a knock for, for Wales as well. I mean, and we've got Matt Tip who is our only fit centre back, but yet we can't rely on him staying fit either. So it could be any kind of defence. Like I'm surprised I've not been actually called up by Jurgen Klopp to say, "Oh, could you could you uh, come up to uh, Liverpool and play like a centre back for uh, for one game?" <laughs> it's, it's actually, it actually feels that way. But then, but then again, I, I look at your injuries as well, and you know, you you've 
you are getting players back at the right thing. Do you think we might see some of your like players who are, are obviously back in training, like your Castagna, your Ndidi Pereira? Do you think, do you think that this game may come too soon for them? Yeah, I think I think some some of them will. Castagna, I'd say you can sort of drop in because it's been a short term injury, so you can come back. But with Ricardo Pereira, he's been out what for nine months now. You don't drop a yeah. player in. After nine months, uh, uh, Liverpool away, you I would say give him it depending on how the game's going. Give him ten minutes at the end and slowly drop him back in because we did it with Ndidi last time. We dropped him straight back into the starting frame when he wasn't fully fit and he got injured again. We can't do that again because it cost us so so much ba- so badly last time, and that's why Madison also has his injuries has carried on from sort of dropping him back in too quickly. You need to let him fully recover. But this is where we go back to the lack of squad depth. It almost It's a vicious cycle. We have the lack of squad depth, so we almost forced to r- rush those players back in. Yeah, and I think yeah. what it was before is that we had to rush Ndidi back in because the, the difference between Ndidi, Chowdhury and Mendy was massive mm. now they've kind of i don't know if the i think rogers has changed his tactics slightly or he's changed the way from what we've heard his way of the training ground it used to be the first 11 versus the reverse reserves 11 so it was always the same team playing game in game out which happened and then we got a few injuries these players that stepped up didn't quite hit the same levels so now you they change up the squad so if ricardo's not available james justin will come into place and he's looked absolutely brilliant this season and he's played I think all five positions along the back, from centre back to um, right wing, left wing, he's really versatile player. We can play where he wants. You've got Luke Thomas on the left hand side if Castagna isn't available, and in Diddy, as we've got Mendy, and Mendy has just looked. There was a bit of doubt um, when we over the mm. summer we signed him because we were like, well, we could do with somebody better because he's not that great. He's just been reinvigorated this season. Him and Tillemans playing together have this understanding and this synergy, which even an Ndidi doesn't give you. Ndidi's a very good holding pivot midfield, maybe like kind of like a Thiago figure, where yeah. Mendy will work and he will move forward a lot and he'll work with Tillemans and create play. And he's looked fantastic this season. So even though Ant says we do have we don't have squad depth, which is true, compared to what it was last season, even though half of them are the same players. They've looked completely invigorated. Like Fuchs is another great, great example. He's looked absolutely sensational this season. And you wouldn't think he was mm. 34. He's lost his pace, but his positional play and his defensive play is, is some of the best I've ever seen. Do you think that's down to Brendan Rogers, like getting him in training like week in, week out and, you know, getting him in to improve? Because, uh, Mendy, like, uh, honestly, Mendy has been one of your best players this season by by a long, long way. Um, Tielemans has been absolutely fantastic. I thought I thought towards the end of last season, I thought he was kind of sort of dipping in and out of form, but ever ever since ever since he started this season, he started like a house on fire as well. And I suppose the big danger man is Jamie Vardy. He absolutely loves a goal against Liverpool, and I'm absolutely scared to say that. <laughs> um do you think do you think that you will get joy from the fact that it could be any defence that Vardy will have a, a good good chance of, of scoring a couple. For me, if if it's an inexperienced centre back, I'll be telling Vardy wait on his shoulder, wait on his shoulder, because at, at some point he will step forward, and I would be if I was Brendan Rodgers, I'll be telling Vardy just harass him the whole game, don't allow him a moment's a moment's rest, get stuck into him, kick him if you need to, don't obviously don't go out to injure him. But just give him a yeah. give him a hard time, and just don't give him a moment's rest. Because as like as good as Reese Williams looked in which I can't remember which game it was, he wasn't massively under pressure. But you've seen the ability Vardy's got to close a man down and stuff. If I think yeah. you we almost need to put put whoever comes into this makeshift back four need to give them the hardest ninety minutes of their life. Yeah, yeah. and try and put pressure on them. That's that's the whole, and it will be. At both ends as well, bearing in mind, because you're obviously if you're coming out as if Salah's in not available because of Corona, but at the same time, that's what we want. Because the way you feel about Jamie Vardy is the way we feel about Mo Salah. He always gets a goal or two mm-hmm. against us, and he always has a great performance. So the fact that he's out is a big win for us. But your front three are gonna bear in mind. John Johnny Evans has played over the international break three times as well because one of their star players for Northern Ireland. 
Um, Wes Fana is still bedding in, to be honest, even though people say he's yeah. great, he will, but he's, 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 he's not played any Premier League games before this season. He's played eight in a row. So he's, he's, he's yeah. had to and then Christian Fuchs, again, is great, but he's not got the pace, which you guys have up front. So it will be won or lost, basically, whoever can convert their chances best. And we've, I think, mm. and we've looked pretty clinical this season. Yeah, for, for me as well, I wouldn't be surprised, again, if it's a similar performance as what we had at the Emirates, where we sat deep and then mm. uh, chose our moments to press. Like when, I think it was Rob Holding was on the ball, we sort of saw him as a weakness. Every time he got on the ball, then we pressed up from that. So if there is a weakness in your defence, it, it wouldn't surprise me if we sat deep and then almost pressed every time they got the ball, but tried to keep it tight and compact and not leave a lot of room in behind. Because it wouldn't surprise me if you had 60, 65% possession this game and then we, we just try and be quick and direct when we go forward. Yeah, well, well as, as as I think the uh, saying is, anyone beats Arsenal these days anyway, uh, either if, if they're home or away anyway. So, uh, <laughs> but um, but no, um, I think Leicester City have been abs- an absolute pleasure to watch this season, and uh, I'm I'm really looking forward to this game. So I need to get starting eleven predictions from you. So I'll start with Ant first. What's your starting eleven for Leicester to play Liverpool? Jesus, this could be absolutely anyone. Um, <laughs> I don't even know how many who we've got available and stuff. But um, no, I would go with Schmeichel in goal, who's going to be our captain. Um, with Castagne coming back in at left wing back with Fuchs, Fafana, and then Johnny Evans as back three. Right back, James Justin. I don't think you can drop Ricky P in yet. Uh, then there's yeah. two midfielders. You've got um, Tielemans and and Mendy. Then in front, you almost have two roaming tens in front of those. Instead of wingers, they're almost like number tens, but drop into those pockets of spaces and all of that. So I'd have Madison there, and we need. To, I think if we're going to get any success from this game, we need to get Madison on the ball as much as possible, and trying to find Vardy and find those pockets of space and make stuff happen. And then I'd also go with Dennis Prayer. He's not the best, like biggest name in the world but the work he does is so underrated and then I think yeah. you, well you obviously know who the main man up top is going to be it's going to be Ian Hatch no of uh, course be Jamie Vardy. <laughs> 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 you say that but when Vardy was out they actually dropped Nacho and they put Harvey Barnes against um, Arsenal so the fact is they played four CDMs to kind of absorb the pressure and so four CDMs four centre mids to absorb the pressure mm. and then Barnes up top so Again, the, the tactics have been three at the back for the most part, but they have they've changed pretty much every single time. Yeah, mm. yeah. So would would you go along the same way of of Ant's team? Yeah, I, I would go a similar formation as in like a four three four three four three two one kind of thing. Vardy at the top. That that back line would probably go um, in the. You'd play Johnny Evans depending on how fit he is. So Johnny Evans. Um, Fafana, Fuchs on that left hand side. If Castagna isn't fit because he has been out with a bit of an injury, if he's not fit, then I'd drop Luke Thomas, who's looked actually brilliant on that left wing hand side. Um, James Justin, if because bearing in mind he's played every single game for us in Europa League and Premier League, if he's not available, Mark Brighton has come in and done a stellar job at that right wing back position. And especially when you guys are going to be pressing, he's going to be really good as, as a defensive player as well. Yeah. So in that in that midfield three, I'd play exactly. I'd, I'd actually be surprised if they start Madison. Pratt has looked absolutely fantastic. Mm. Plays his socks off for sixty minutes, and he comes off, and Madison comes on and gives the creativity. Uh, so him, then I'd play Tillemans and Mendy because they both look fantastic. However, again, Tillemans is an amazing player, but he's played every single game as well. He might be a bit, and even yeah. for Belgium, he's played that, so he might be on his weaker legs as well. And then I'd play Vardy and Barnes up top kind of together. So you've got mm. that pace to hit you on the counter. And that, with Dennis Pratt, is going to be something that I think we will u- utilise quite well because Jamie yeah. Vardy's going to be up for this game for, for minute one because we've ha- he's basically had two weeks off of not playing. Yeah. Oh, wow. It's, it's, it's a formidable team. It's a formidable team. And, you know, it's going to be a very, very intriguing 
encounter. Right, I've got to, I've got to go with a Liverpool eleven. Right, this could be like as Ant says, this, this could be any team that we could play. Um, right, so definite Alison Becker, Alison Becker, our number one goalkeeper. It will not be Adrian. I know you would like to see Adrian play, but it's not going to be Adrian. Um, I'm going to go Nico Williams. I know you got a knock against Wales, but I think, uh, for Wales, but I know he will probably make it. Then I'm going to go Matip. I think that might be a bit bad, uh, ambitious, but we'll see. I think I think you've just got to put a big ball over him and uh, wrap him up in cotton wool to keep him fit. Um, I'll go Matip. I'll go Fabinho. There has been, he has been uh, you know looked at uh, this uh, this week, so I think he'll be back. Robertson, I think will play. He played 90 minutes for Scotland against Israel, so I think he'll be back. Um, then I'm going to go. I'm going to go two in midfield. So I'm going to go Henderson. Henderson is fit, apparently. Mm-hmm. So that's that's very good news for us. I'm going to go Genie Vinaldum as well, and then I'm going to go for um, left left sort of side of the um, attack behind one striker. I'm going to go with Diogo Jota, and then in the middle I'm going to Sadio Mane. This is going to be where it gets interesting. I'm going to go Jordan Shakiri to play Ooh. in the. Uh, uh, in the uh, right hand side of the attack and then up front Bobby Firmino so yeah Shakiri is a very interesting one but I've just got a feeling that with Salah being out you want someone on that right hand side who is going to be very very good and I think Shakiri deserves a start I think he's been fantastic and every any time he's He's come onto the the field this season, so yeah, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go with a, a four two three. When I do think we will match up uh, similar uh, to what you you guys play. So predictions. This is where it gets very interesting. What are you saying for this for this game, Ant? Uh, it's one of those like normally in normal circumstances you'll take absolutely anything from Anfield, right? An absolutely Dog performance, but you manage to scrape a point, you'll be happy. But I'm going. To, I'm hoping we can get three, all three points with the team that you've got and the injuries you've got. But at the same time, mm-hmm. your record at Anfield is outstanding. So a draw would be yeah. a decent result. But I don't know if you know this. The last team to break your record of consecutive wins at Anfield. Do you know who this was, Doug? Not a clue. Leicester City. Was it Leicester? Oh wow! Yeah, it was nineteen eighties. I'm pretty sure. But so if we can do that again, I'll be happy. But yeah, any I'll go with a two-two. But I would be slight. I would really like to see us go and have a real go and get try and get the win. Ooh, Desmond, interesting. Neil, I, I think we can win four-three. It's going to be a tight game. <laughs> Normally, I go for one-one. <laughs> Yeah, I go for a one-one, and I'm like, right, this time I'm putting my balls on the line a little bit more because it's it, it's I'm fed up with saying one-one over and over again, and we end up doing well. Four-three, <laughs> it will be a battle of defenses as well for who's going to actually be who's going to have the better defense. I think we can nick it because at the end of the day, Liverpool at Anfield are not going to are not going to sit and give us the ball. If you were no. to do that, we would you would probably win, but you're not going to. So the fact that you're playing into our hands and the fact that you're at Anfield, the, the, the fans aren't there, the fact that your players are out a little bit, if any, there were, if any there was a time to play you, it is under these circumstances with this amount of injuries and lack of crowd. So that's why I'm saying we can win 4-3. It's going to be a great game of football. However, I think we can just pip it because we can, we can play the attractive football, we can defend really well, and at the same time, I think we can have a right go at you guys. And yeah, 4 3, I'm hoping mm. for. Wow. 4 3. I mean, we're, if we get a 4 3, we are going to have one hell of a match. And it's going to be goals galore. And it'll be good for the neutrals. It won't be so good for our heart rates. Let's, <laughs> let's put it that way as well. Oh, I actually think you are capable of actually ending our record at Anfield. Um, I'm going to go 2 1 Liverpool. But. Honestly, it could be any score. It could be any score. But I'm gonna st- I'm gonna stick with a two one. I'm gonna go with the same scoreline as, as last season. But what I'm gonna say this time, you guys will score first and then we'll come back and win two one. Because we've not kept a lead all season. We've not had a half time lead yet. So I think 
that will be quite pivotal. So I'm going to say that you guys score first. Uh, Vardy will score. I know that for a fact. Just breaking. Um, just uh, I've just read it now. Literally, as we're recording this, it's coming out. I think Jordan Henderson will be out for this game, but Firmino, Fabino, and Thiago will return. That's what Klopp said in his interview just now, because obviously we're recording it as a post live. So, as you were saying, yeah, Thiago and Fabinho could return, but Henderson is not available. Right. Okay. So. Woo! Rewind. Uh, put Thiago in, in there with uh, with Van Alden. Then that's 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 great news about Fabinho and, and Thiago as well. Gentlemen, it's been an absolute pleasure yet again to get you on the channel. It's, it's great to speak to Ant again because I've not actually spoken to you for ages. I think the last time you were on my channel was probably a lockdown chat, and that was way way back in I think April. So it's great to get you on, Ant and um, Neil. It's great to chat to you yet again this week because you were on the you were on the podcast earlier this week. Uh, where can we find you on your socials? Ant, you first, please. Uh, so check out Beyond the Ninety, which is the channel me, James, and Neil all run all all stuff Leicester really. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's where Neil, where Neil's pointing. Um, but yeah, and then check out my own personal socials, LCFC Burrett. That's on YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, and um, yeah. Again, just chatting shit about Leicester, really. <laughs> and Neil, I would imagine I would imagine you're the same as well. Yes, if you want more Leicester chat, come over to us. There's four of us: me, myself, and James and Alex that help run that. So together, uh, so you'll see Beyond the Ninety LCFC. You'll find us on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube is where we we put most of our content because it's longer form stuff. And yeah, again, thanks for having us on, Doug. It, we really appreciate it and. It's gonna um, again. I'm really excited for this game because it's gonna be a good one. Yeah, absolutely. But no, you know, guys, please go and check uh, check out um, Beyond the Ninety. Great, great podcast. Go and check out Ant's channel as well. Um, closing in on three k, I believe. I think you're you're just a wee bit off three k, but um, mm-hmm. you will get there. You will get there as well. But yeah, guys, let us know your starting eleven in the comment section down below. Let us know what you think about the game and give us your score prediction for the game as well. It's going to be a very interesting game. 7.15 on Sunday evening. Going to be a fantastic affair. And uh, hopefully, hopefully for Neil and Ant that the Foxes come out on top. But for me, let's hope the Reds come out on top. But uh, no, being serious. If you do like this content, please hit that subscribe button. Smash the like on this video. And uh, yeah, I'll see you all in the next one. See you later. Bye-bye. Thanks, guys.